All right, buddy. So, uh, what's your name and where are you from? Well, my name's Kevin. I'm from the Inland Empire, Southern California, Riverside. Okay. Uh, you said the what empire? Inland Empire. So Inland it's, Empire. That sounds like a gang or something, man. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's a little bit. So all my homeboys, they get what they call as their letters, the IE. Uh, that's kind of like the that's kind of like our area, and it's it's yeah. we're we're basically we're just east of LA north of San Diego, and we're just a collection of cities out here in the desert, and we call ourselves the Inland Empire. Okay, and that's typically, if someone's from that area, if they're all good and all that, they got it, like, tatted on their, I hear uh, they like to tat their well, area yeah, from where you they're at. Earn You'll earn it. So it's like your rocker. So, like, if you're from if you're from SFV or the Valley or wherever you're from, you'll get your, your, your city blasted on you or whatever. Well, so you got to earn good. just to get your city blasted on you? Yes, in Southern California, you have to earn your oh, okay. wherever you're from. If, if well, th this is prison politics, not on the streets. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, if you're locked up and you're in the pen and you want to put your city on you, you better you better put in some work. You better handle somebody that's fucking up from your neighborhood. Yeah. Now, see, I knew you tattoos. You know, it's like that uh, nationwide. You know, some tattoos yeah. you got to earn it. But I didn't know you had to earn literally where you're from to get that blast on you. I thought yeah. maybe, hey, you could just there's, rock that. Hey, I'm born people. there. I can rock it, you know? Yeah, people get in trouble for that. They'll put the wrong tattoo on themselves, and uh, they'll either have to step up and handle it, or they're going to get handled because they're misrepresenting. See, that's wild, because what if someone, because I'm sure there's been people that got their city tattooed on them, and then before they even went to the pen and knew any of that shit, and probably got into some stuff because of that. Isn't that wild to think that that well, probably has well, so, happened? So then that would be that would be a good scenario. And, and and I think the way it would work out. I mean, not every every scenario is gonna work out the same. But say if some cat came in and he had Riverside tattooed on him from the streets, and maybe one of his homeboys put it on him. Maybe he did something out here. Whatever the case may be. But if you go into the pen and you're representing River, Riverside, and one of the homeboys said, "Hey, this dude's fucking up." You know, well, you're automatically going to go, well, yeah, I'm representing, so I'm going to handle that. Yeah. You know, so it, it should go without question if you have that on you. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. if you haven't done anything and, you, and you're representing that, you should take care of it. Earn yeah. Your yeah. Okay. Uh, well, damn, we got into it rather quickly. We jumped right into this mix. Uh, but, all right, let's rewind it, man. Uh, how long have you done in prison and what sent you there, man? So... I did a little bit of juvenile time when I was younger. Uh, I started fucking around with the dope, hanging around with the wrong crowd. No excuses. It's not something I'm proud of. I don't really like to like boast or or tell my story. You know, and I've watched a lot of videos and it, it, it kind of, I mean, it is what it is. I've been, I've done 10 years. So I've sat there in, in those walls and I've listened to everybody tell the story and the story usually always ends and then I got busted. You know, yeah. it's always a long run of how I stayed up for two weeks. I did this, I did that. but. Really, what ended up happening is I was high. I was in the wrong mindset. I uh, went on a string of burglaries. I got busted for eight counts of first degree burglary. They sentenced me to 10 years, eight months. And I did about nine and a half years on that at 85%. Yeah, they let me out on my birthday when I turned 18. And uh, I was clean. I had a good head, head on my shoulders. And I did good for about two months. And uh, it just went away like that as soon as I started again. Yeah. Uh, well, did Juvie prepare you in any way for the, no, the big house not really uh maybe like physically expecting to fight and all that you know but juvenile is a lot rougher than prison in my opinion really um, <laughs> yeah you get a room full of kids they all want to prove themselves you know yeah you know, well, you know, you're stupid when you're a kid so it is what it is but it was a lot rougher it's, i mean nobody was stabbing nobody or nothing like that but i mean when it you, came to just fighting all the time yeah. huh it, it wasn't as racially segregated, you know. I, I could, I could find a Mexican dude and not expect, you know, fifteen Mexicans to jump in, you know, and the whites not to jump in. But yeah, so juvenile was a little different, smaller scale. The politics were there, but they weren't as intense. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of knew what you were getting into. Uh, did you have to go to L.A. County? What county did did you go to? So I got busted in. San Bernardino, I went through West Valley, and okay. uh, that place is a dungeon, man. So it's it's kind of a trip. You just this place is so massive, but it's, it's got long hallways. You just you get lost in this place, and it it was a it was a little eye opener in there for me as well because 
I knew, I kind of knew already prison politics, um, just because I got a lot of family that have been in prison. So I kind of know how a little works, you know. Um, and then juvenile hall was kind of different. Like it was, it was, it's hard to explain, I guess, but I feel like juvenile hall set me up with a bad idea of how prison was when I already knew it was a certain way. If that makes any sense. I can agree with that, my friend. God, I, when I was in Jew, it should have nothing like prison, man. It set me up for failure yeah. in many ways. Yeah. <laughs> you said the county jail. What was that county jail you said again? West Valley. West Valley. Uh. It's like a dungeon. Yeah, it's just, it's a bunch of pods and they're all, everything's inside. Uh, you do have like, so what they'll do is they got like a center pod and then they'll have that, that center pod, there'll be a cop in there with a bunch of cameras and all that. And then they'll have pods going out in each direction in a full circle. And yeah. One of the, they'll be lettered A, B, C, D or whatever. And then one of those will be a yard and it'll just be a concrete wall with a big old cage over it, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of the only sunlight you'll get if you ever get yard because they all, they'll, they'll alternate them between each pod. Yeah. And was the politics strong in that county jail or, uh, Every, how, was it, how was it jumping in there? I mean, is is county where you became uh, a part of the wood pile, or where did all that turn in? No, you know, where I, did all that begin? So, so everybody, if you're white and you go to prison, you're automatically a wood. You're not joining a prison gang. You're nothing like that. You're just a wood. You know, you're, you're a yeah. white dude. But every white dude that comes in, if you're not something, you're not a skinhead. You're not, you know, you're not affiliated. You don't have, you know, certain tattoos or whatever on you. You're going to be a wood. That's it. You know, you're not just a normal white guy. You're a wood. We're all going to stick together. And if you're not going to run with us, we're going to remove you because you're taking a spot that somebody else can be with us. You know, another solid dude that is going to fight. Yeah. So either you are or you're not. You know, it's you can't kind of ride the middle. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this, man. Uh, see, because it gets confusing. I'm sure a lot of people that have never been to California prison system, it gets confusing for them as well. Uh See, I know, like, uh, in, in uh, let's say, the black car, you know, you got Bloods and Crips, and they, they kind of put their differences aside, and they just become, you know, in one car, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. I, I'm not, I don't want to put it in, like, yeah, they're all together, chilling. In, in, they ride uh, on each other, too. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Uh, but, you know, that's what I'm trying to say for, like, let's say, the white guys. You got A, B, you got skinheads. I mean, you got the wood pile. I mean, do they all just get along and they just fall under one big umbrella? I mean. For the most part, yeah, we do. So especially in Southern California. So like the, the yards that I were on, let's say there's 1,200 dudes on the yard. Um, you'd be lucky 60 to 80 of those guys are white. And yeah. that's every white. That's the woods and the skinheads. That's every white, you know. So every dude's got to be solid. Every dude has to show up. It, it, it's just, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. And, but and if all you go on a yard where there's more, like, so like on the Northern yards, there's a lot more white dudes. You hear a lot more set tripping. Basically, yeah. you know, the, the white and the skinheads will bump heads. They'll go to, they'll go at each other. The LA car might not be liking what the Orange County car is pushing. All of a sudden you got a five on five among the whites, you know, but yeah. down South, we can't do that because we got to be tighter. Yeah. You know, we, we can't be fighting amongst each other. Yeah. See, it's just it's 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 just hard for me to understand because I'm thinking, you know, the way I think is, uh, A B runs all the whites out there. That's how I'm thinking. The brand runs all the whites pretty much, and anything underneath is is, is just underneath. You know, that's how well, I look at it. Yeah. Well, it, it it it's hard to say against that because uh, that is the reality. But there was no A B on the line. The whole time I was there. Yeah, so now, then someone else would take up or something like that. But, but now there was there's other groups out there that had the green light. So if, if you show up and you're you're from this this group, the, the AB basically sent word. These guys have the yards now. They have the keys. Okay. Okay. So if you're from a certain organization. Say you show up. You're from P9 or whatever the case may be. You're so and so. You're already you're already spoken for from these guys these guys they're never hitting the line so anything that they're associated it's all it's all kites yeah know? yeah it's kind of different like i said i got out in 2012 here we are 2020 you know yeah. eight year difference there's a lot a lot of different stuff that has been going on since then 
Not, from what I understand, I think they let all of those dudes out that were on the gang validations back out into the main line. So yeah, that's what I heard too. The world than what I remember. Yeah. All right. So you go from county to prison, man. Tell me, how was your experience going into the pen? Was it shocking? Did you get any kind of situations at first, or was it kind of structured? Um, it was pretty structured. Uh, when I went from county, um, it was definitely unstructured over there. Uh, and then I went to reception, which is a Wasco State Prison. It's in Central California. Uh -huh. And I was only there a couple months, and it's kind of where they just assess you. They look at, you know, what your crimes were, and then they got like a modifier system. What they'll do is they'll, they'll check. They, they, they got a point system. You, you reach so many points, you go one, two, three, all the way up to four, which is maximum security. And they placed me at level three security. And uh, the reception was kind of interesting because you get all these different counties come in from all over. And so you get all these different characters and you kind of, and then you branch out to all these other prisons. So it's kind of yeah. like an information network a little bit. You know, you learn, you know, who's doing what, who's what, where's where, who's going where. Everybody's always keep, they got nothing better to do, but keep track of everybody and what they're doing, who's going where. It's it's kind of a, it's an interesting thing right there. It's kind of like see, a super hub. Yeah, see, like over here, um, the reception, one of the most, dangerous prisons i've ever been in was a reception man and i seen some crazy shit see they throw everyone of every level in the reception so at any given time you could ha be housed with right next to someone that's level five or six but no one's classified yet and transported so uh it was always hectic as hell i'm talking about crazy as hell was it is it like that in california do they house everyone of all levels together and no, no, no. Not necessarily the security. They kind of already have a rough, okay, idea. Like so, when they when they, when I went to reception, they have they have dorm areas that you can recept in, and then they have cell areas. They took they sent me to the cell area, so they kind of already had an idea that I was going to be a higher level. Okay, so I didn't okay, one of the lower level areas. Uh, but reception is dangerous for one thing is because in California, if you are calling shots or if you're making moves and you make the wrong move, you have to answer for that. So in the yeah. reception center, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of in and out. There's a lot of there's a lot of gray area. It's not really there's not somebody there always basically making sure Keep, shit's done right. Keeping or, tabs. Yeah. So Yeah. So say so and so's got a, a personal beef with so and so, you know, they could smut that dude up at the reception center and then they're going to get shot to a prison clear across the, you know, the state. And then this guy gets shot. He made a move on this dude or even just sent a couple missiles after somebody. And he won't even have to answer for the bad call. So there's a lot of shady shit that goes on in those reception centers yeah. as well. So we're set. You went from Wasco to uh, Wasco, correct? Yeah, Wasco, and then from Wasco they sent me out to Ironwood, which is down on the border of Arizona, and that was a that was a crazy prison. Not it crazy sounds like a crazy prison. <laughs> yeah, it's in the middle of the desert, man. So I showed up there. I'm an 18 year old kid, 145 pounds, just. Just looking like I was probably 14, you know what I mean? Like everybody thought I was uh, just underage. Because, as a matter of fact, so when I got to Ironwood, uh, I roll up on the yard and my homeboy's there. He's 18 now, but he he was convicted as a juvenile. So it was kind of interesting. And and this is this is one of the things that I was talking about is where the, the juvenile system kind of messed me up a little bit. And also in the juvenile system, it was everything was kind of last name, you know? It was, kinda, yeah. it was a little bit different, you know? So when I seen him, I wasn't even on the yard yet and he's walking the yard and we're coming into the, this is like the intake yard. So they, every time they see this, the paper suits coming, basically a new bus. Everyone that comes look. And he, yeah. I see, see me. So I yell, what's up? And I yell his last name, you know, and all the homeboys look at him like, oh fuck, why is this fool like talking like a cop basically, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, hey, what's up, uh, Reginald Senior the third? How are you doing over there, yeah. dude? I was about to yell the CDC number out for him, you know. I mean, it, so I, I'm looking out of place, and uh, by this time he's already already uh, basically obtained a handle as well. So he's he's not even going by his first name anymore, you know. So I go and I talk to him, and the first thing, you know, I, I call him a bitch and a punk, you know, just because I'm excited to see him. And that's how we talk to each other, and he was kind of just looked at me funny. He was like, "Dude, you can't," you know. And I knew, but it, <laughs> that it, it sounds like what I did on my first damn yeah. day, man. So he almost, he almost had to take off on me right there. Just, we're both young, you know, we're 18. 
and he's got a couple of the other homeboys right there. And we're, you know, he's introducing me and, and I kind of give him the punk bitch thing, you know, and he kind of just looked at me. He's like, dude, don't, you know, and I'm like, oh, don't be a bitch, man. Like, it's just, you know, and I said, oh. again, dude, he's going to want me to take off on you, you know? So yeah. well, luckily it didn't go there, you know, but I almost bumped my head there. Had to fight well, my homeboy as soon as I seen him. Yeah, that's wild, man. You said, what was the name of this prison again? Uh, Ironwood. Ironwood, Ironwood. Yeah, that's a crazy sound name for prison. They named it after a tree out there. Ah, that's and crazy, the man. The store is named after a lizard. So they're they're right there in Blythe, California. And then there's a, a desert iguana out there. It's called the Chuckawalla Lizard. And they named the level two next door to it after that. That's Chuckawalla State Prison. Wow, that's genius. They, they're like, hey. That lizard's badass. Let's name this prison that. You they know? are badass. Those, I caught a couple of them. These lizards are massive. These, oh, they really? get like this around, yeah. And what they do is they'll, uh, like when these vultures and shit try to attack them, they'll run into the rock and they'll blow themselves up. And then like the, the eagle, the hawks, whatever's trying to get them, they'll grab a hold of their tail, they'll rip their tail off, and then they just stick themselves in the rock. Chuckle all lizards. Oh yeah. shit! I need to look I was, that thing up. I was up, notorious man. in Ironwood, man. I when I first got there, I went and uh, I started working for a, as, as a landscaping. What was the work? It was actually a vocational class. Uh huh. And they kind of put us in this back corner, you know, back through the work exchange, and we got to learn. And basically, uh, I, I learned a lot of shit like plant identification, uh, acidity levels, uh, oh, pH levels cool. in the soil, sprinkler systems. You learn a lot of cool shit there. Um, but man, I had the run of the mill. I was catching prairie dogs, birds, lizards. Yeah, <laughs> I had they, they made you do it, or you just chose to do it? Well, I chose to do it. I mean, I'm a, I'm an animal lover by heart, so it's kind of just you know, it's like I want to feel normal. I'm going to catch me a pet. Yeah, I mean, did you catch something and just keep it? Oh, I caught all kinds of shit. Yeah, I caught a bunch of lizards. I had lizards all throughout my term. Uh, in your cell? Places. Yeah, in my cell. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> they have these, uh, they're called Western side blotch lizards, and they're just these litter, little like fence lizards. They call them blue bellies. I don't know if you guys got them on the East Coast, but oh, the, no, the little common lizards. And uh, man, those things are so cool. They used to keep you company. Just they're real social. You know, they you get a couple of them. I had them. I was mating them for a while. And, and, what? Yeah. yeah. Stop just, playing, man. Like a little hot rock for them, you know. Go you around never, at night with my little, uh, I'd have like a little handball container. I'd go catch bugs every night, something to do, you know? Oh, my God, man. That You never know what's going on in the you prison on the other side of the country. Yeah, I've had rappers, <laughs> all that shit. Oh, my God. So I'm guessing uh, this was kind of a pretty chill uh, prison, Ironwood? Um, yeah, it was It was pretty chill uh, when I first What got level there, was it? It was level three. The level okay. three prison. Um, it, I think it opened in like '98 or something. So it was only open for a few years before I got there. Um, and it was it was pretty laid back. Uh, it was a programming prison. Yeah. Um, it was. They didn't really. Yeah, I mean, it, it, when it hit the fan, it hit the fan. You know, I mean, it got live, but for yeah. the most part, you know, the everybody wanted the dope to flow, so the money was flowing. Yeah, you know. of course. I hear that's a huge yeah, thing. Man, huge huge man. problem out there in California is yeah. a dope game. Uh, well, let me back it up really quick. You said you got up with your homeboy. He was running with a handle and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, was there ever a time, I don't know if he was affiliated at the time when you met him or not, but was there ever any situation where a guy was like, hey, man, you know, we want you to ride with us, you know, well, to another so level, that, not just a wood, yeah. but to another level, well, that, you know what I mean? That's an, that's an interesting thing, and uh, it's it's kind of weird. I hear a lot of people talk about joining gangs in prison and stuff like that, and uh, it's it's kind of weird. I'm not a skinhead, so it's kind of hard not to speak on it, but you really can't become a skinhead in, in prison. You really yeah. can't. You know, there's certain there's certain gangs. There, it, it, it's kind of two different ways, you know. There's So there's the dope ruins everything, honestly. You know, yeah. you may have the most solid dude out there. He's got this, 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 this. As soon as he's on that dope, everything goes out the window. Politics are gone. The rules are gone. Everything's gone. So it's it's kind of hard to say certain things are always said a certain way because they may be a certain way. But as soon as that dope hits the yard, it doesn't matter. You know, only thing that matters is that dope anymore. Yeah. So prison politics are always kind of a gray area. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's, I've never had anybody ask me to join a gang. Okay. Um, you really can't necessarily within the whites 
Now you can, as far as like the the higher up and all that stuff, you can, but it's 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 not that easy. You got yeah. you got really, you know. Now, uh, the majority of white guys in there, I'm guessing, are probably just you know the basic woods. They they just kind of want to get in and get out and and move on with their life. They don't want to run up their shit. Uh, get fresh charges and stuff like that. Uh, so a, a very important question for these type of individuals is just trying to do their time and go home. Would there be situations where, uh, even though they're not affiliated or anything, will there be times where they will be forced to do something they didn't want to other than riding out when it needs to be ride out on the yard or something like that? Any other times that they'll be pressured or forced to do something? All the time, all the time. There's always, there's always going to be something that needs to be handled, uh, and there's going to be the guy that doesn't want to handle it. You know, uh, there's always going to be somebody trying to talk somebody else into it. And it, it, it every scenario is different. Um, you know, when you, if you're young and you got a little stretch, you, you're, you're going to want to handle it. You know, you're going to want to go. Yeah, you're going to you step go, up. Yeah, you're going to want to go and do a shoot turn. You're going to want to go back there. That way, when you come out, nobody can say nothing to you. You know, yeah. you're, if you ask me funny something, you come up with me with a piece. I'm just going to take off on you. That was yeah. my thing. I, I put in a little bit of work in the beginning, handled my business. And then if somebody looked at me funny, I just give them the cold stare. And I already knew the guys. You you would get out there and you would see it. You know, you would see the dudes that were on the dope. They didn't want to leave the yard because they're staying high out there. But shit needs to get handled. Those dudes are the soldiers. Well, if if they can't talk somebody into handling it or pressure somebody into handling it, they got to handle it. You know, yeah. it's like, well, dude owes this this amount of money. He needs to be removed from the yard. Well, he owes that amount of money because he's on dope. You don't see me strung out, you know. So when when them dudes come for their money and it's time to ride, I'll be there on the front line, fucking handling business, scraping your ass off the ground. But I'm not gonna go stab that dude for you, you know. Yeah. And if you ask me again, I'm fucking taking off on you right there. That's it. We're both going to the hole and we'll answer for it back there. Because why, yeah. why would I let somebody put a piece in my hand? You know. Yeah. It yeah. happened. 